Hello, and thanks so much for joining us. I have Ashwarya with me today, and we're going to be talking about data privacy. But before we dive into the questions that I have for you, can you give everybody a quick introduction? Yeah, sure, Emma. So uh, my name is Ishwara Srinivasan. I'm currently an AI and ML innovation leader at IBM. I uh, pretty much work with the data science product and sales team at IBM to enable better products and like better machine learning uh, techniques going out to the to the right kind of clients. Outside of work, I am uh, like running a nonprofit organization called Illuminate AI, which is a mentorship platform and it's helping uh, a lot of people to get mentorship for for their career growth for understanding like which uh, which career to follow in term, like within the space of data science, like which industry to choose, and also helping them with um, with with their educational uh, goals. So yeah, that's that's what I do using uh, like using my uh, LinkedIn platform. Wonderful. Thank you so much again for joining us. And as I teased, we're going to be talking about the idea of data privacy today. So to get us started, can you share some of your thoughts on kind of the importance behind this idea and why it's, it's worth a conversation? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the major reasons why I, uh, I feel, you know, uh, concerned about data privacy is uh, when I have seen these applications reacting to my inputs, like even though I am a data scientist, it still like, you know, creeps me out at times when I realize that somewhere my phone is capturing my audio somewhere, like the slightest of thing that I probably like speak with somebody else or uh, like uh, somebody else, you know, like in my network are searching for a certain thing, I end up getting recommendations for those. And it's just the, just the concept of, you know, like, I do not know what and which of my data is being monitored. I don't know where is it being used. I don't know how is it being collected. I don't know if it's going to be used for anything else apart from what they claimed it will be used for. For example, a lot of these applications that we see, like a lot of apps that we use on our phones, um, for example, right, like you have a, a daily reminder application which helps you keep a track of the number of things that you have to do every day, like setting up weekly goals, etc. Uh, somewhere I feel like when I'm downloading the app and like, you know, installing those, it inherently like takes access of my audio, it takes access of my keyboards, etc. And I do not know what this data is going to be used for. So these kind of scaries does, you know, concern me about, um, about organizations using our data in something that's either unknown to me or could be used in like a harmful way against me. So, uh, being a tech person, I can completely understand how alien it could be for somebody who is not in the space and do not understand like how huge this issue is. And that's where I feel, uh, you know, with the advancements in technology, with uh, machine learning and like all these uh, innovative solutions being integrated in our lives, governments have been um, have been like constantly uh, analyzing and, you know, like they have identified the issue. And that's where we see a lot of organizations are like, you know, governmental uh, bodies taking action or like taking uh, and building law enforcement against these kind of activities. So I, I completely understand and I, uh, I do feel that there has to be regulations around how these are built, because even though the companies are not having any bad intention against using the data in any certain way, but it there is still possibilities. This, the possibilities still exist that it can be used or like it can be, it can reflect something uh, ill on the society. It's interesting that you say that it kind of weirds you out sometimes because that's how I feel, even though I understand the purpose behind it and I like the convenience 85% of the time, it still makes me nervous to realize that I don't understand everything that's happening downstream or just what you were saying, specifically the voice stuff. When I say something and then suddenly start to see search results or ads coming back to me for something that I know I didn't actually input into a device, I get a little creeped out. And so I love that you brought that forward as even a data scientist, that that those stories and that idea is still a, a little intimidating to you even being someone in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, can you share a little bit on, you know, we talked obviously high level about why this is important, but can you dive into kind of some of the ethical impacts that might come forward if we don't start to address data privacy now? 
Um, some of the ethical issues that I can, you know, think about, uh, let me first put it from like a human perspective, right? Like as, as a society, uh, the companies that are developing these kind of solutions, one of the things that we see is, are they actually being inclusive of all different, like, uh, all different classes, like gender, race, uh, et cetera, right? Like, are they actually being inclusive about all these different varieties of people when they are building these solutions and they might be building something for a certain class and might be like might be ignorant towards a minority class and then they realize that it can have an ill effect on the minority class so that is one of my major concerns i feel that that is something that can be seen to happen a very small example for that matter um, when we are using voice searches, right? Like when we are, when we're using voice searches, we see that, uh, I, especially like a lot of the times I'm searching for Indian things and my accent or the words that the app is not able to recognize is something which does concern me. I, I feel that in a country which is so diverse, which has a lot of population from Asia as well. Um, how are the apps not tuned in a way that it can understand words that are probably coming from a particular language or coming from a particular uh, dialect? And and we know that the, like these kind of stores or you know like the addresses that I'm voice searching for actually exist, but then there's still that gap between the language understanding and uh, like the technology which is enabling it, and that's that's why we see feel that like you know friction. So these kind of things when uh, reflect back to the society, they might cause issues. And uh, that's like, this is just like a very, you know, harmless, simple example that I gave, but this can again be extrapolated and seen in different different dimensions that uh, when, when these solutions are built without taking into consideration different, uh, like, different like diversity in the society, it can have like an ill impact on, on the society. That's a really good example because uh, sitting here with, you know, my English as in my native language, we were even talking about pronouncing your name and yeah. how different that can be with different dialects and how I might not be able to get that out the same way that you do because of my native language. And so there's probably all sorts of implications of that down the line as we start to look at voice technology and being able to do things like, you know, tell your voice assistant to accomplish a certain task for you. So that's a really again, kind of changes my viewpoint on things from sitting from my specific spot of privilege of having that that language uh, easily accepted. But there's so many people that have even just different ways of pronouncing English within the United States, let alone all of the different dialects and accents across the world. Yeah, absolutely. So you mentioned something in the first question where you started talking a little bit about how governments are stepping in and putting some regulations in place to protect consumers and um, and their data. Can you talk through some of those different kind of um, compliance areas or regulations that are coming forward, how they, per, um, how they protect our consumers and maybe what you think needs to be done if it hasn't already? Yeah, for sure. So uh, again, like this is a trade off, right? Like we are building technology to enable certain things, but in turn, it could also be causing other harms. And that's why we need to be careful about like how we are building these technologies. And there will be, you know, certain uh, voids which might not be able to be filled by technology because there is this other power which is pulling it back and, uh, you know, making sure that it's actually regulated, it's actually, you know, uh, compliant to, to like different countries, to different, uh, like to different needs of the people. So that is, that is where I feel that there is a trade-off, like the better technology, yes, like everybody will be better enabled, but it can also have its ill effects. So that's, that's where the balance needs to be hit. And what, uh, what I have seen like with governments and like organizations doing is, um, people have made this in much more regulated manner. So a, a very easy way to put this is auditing, right? Like companies will now be audited for the machine learning models that they're building. They'll be audited for the data sets that they are capturing in, in their organizations. So uh, there'll be like uh, rules and regulations and policies which make sure that companies are not accessing certain kinds of data from people and they have logged down information about uh, say data set one, where is this going to be used? What are the models that are being running on this data set? 
and what's the end result or like what's the end point where this model is running like how does it impact the users etc so this entire pipeline right from data to model and how it's being used in the hands of the users all these needs to be well documented so that there is an audit process back on the organization and it can be made sure that they are following all the regulations through the entire pipeline so that's a very simple way to put it right like they're ma making it enabled for uh, for uh, audit purposes where they are responsible to be like you know accountable for making sure that everything that they are doing is being tracked is being logged is being uh, documented well wonderful Thank you so much for taking the time to talk through all of this with me. And I would be hard pressed if a lot of my followers aren't already following you. But if you're not, make sure you make your way over to her LinkedIn to catch all of the live streams that you do, as well as just posts about things that are pertinent in the world of digital transformation and data. But thank you again so much for your time and have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you so much. If you're looking for expert tips on how to get started with your transformation or looking to hone in on your approach, make sure that you subscribe to our channel to catch our weekly digital transformation talk series where we interview experts from around the world on how to make it happen.